It's six o'clock and it is time to show our sinfully decadent dessert bake-off. I hope you enjoy this. Uh, we will be posting a link in the uh, on out there in this the YouTube stream if you're in the live chat. We'll post a link to the recipes that you're about to see uh, for the desserts that you're about to see and then after the live stream ends I can add that to the comments under the YouTube video also. So without that, here we go. Sinfully Decadent Dessert Competition. The criteria for the Sinfully Decadent Dessert Competition is the entries are being judged on appearance, flavor, texture and consistency, aroma, and overall taste. Our judges will be scoring the desserts based on these categories. The dessert with the overall highest score will be first place. If there are any ties for first, second, and third place, the score for overall taste will be added up from all the judges, and that will help us determine the winner for the tie for that position. Yeah, I'm Chrissy Gulace. Um, I'm a German teacher at Northmont High School. Five or six years ago, something just kind of, hey, I want to try to bake something. So I started with like banana bread. My youngest daughter one day she had a day off school and so I took a day off work and I said, let's make something. So she flipped through my cookbook and said, let's make the carrot cake. And so that was kind of my signature for a while. And then I eventually got brave enough to try to make my own icing. And it turned out really great, the cream cheese icing. And so I was like, I can do this and I got myself a KitchenAid mixer and I just kind of started trying more recipes and finding out that like um, my Better Homes and Gardens cookbook has some of the best recipes in it. So um, it's kind of helped me kind of branch out to, I know I can do this, let's try this, what am I good at? But I would say cakes are my forte, not cookies. It is my own take on the traditional German Schwarzwälder Kirschtorte, which means black, forest cherry cake and I decided to make the cake wrap not just chocolate but like a mocha chocolate cake so I thought let's try this I've never made a Schwarzwälder Kirschtorte before and um, instead of cherries on top I put chocolate covered espresso beans and it has um, a chocolate cake the mocha chocolate cake base a cherry filling that has a Kirsch liqueur in it then a whipped cream icing with chocolate shavings on the outside. And I would say that it's not a beginner level kind of cake because of all the things. It took me about, I don't know, four hours, you know, beginning to end to get it all done with all the elements. And I had to be really careful with the whipped cream because as it got warmer, it starts weeping. So I had to kind of take breaks and uh, let the whipped cream cool down again. And the chocolate shavings too, like I was, trying to put it on and it was melting in my hand. So I had to like take a stop, put it back in the fridge. I have not tried this before, so I don't know what it's gonna taste like. I'm gonna be as surprised as anybody else, but I've had some really good Schwarzwald, the Kirschtorte in the Schwarzwald, in the Black Forest in Germany. And it's very creamy. So I'm looking forward to trying it myself. I really enjoyed it. I'm not super competitive necessarily, but like when it comes to, hey, bake something, I'm all for that. So I really enjoyed just getting up this morning and baking the cakes. I'm Josh Murphy. I, and I'm Chris Murphy. Oh, I've been baking for quite a while, but he's taken a shine to it about the past two, two to three years. Two or three years. So he's been coming into the kitchen a little more saying, Dad, can I help? Uh, I probably do lemon bars the most, but we have done cookies, scones, basically anything that we can think of. Uh, brownies, cupcakes. Pies. So he's well-rounded in his baking skills and the th things he tries. He's, he's actually done quite a few things on his own. This one being a little more challenging, we took together. We looked up a few things and the one we came across was the Sacre Torte, which is a, apparently in an original. It's served at the Hotel Sacre and the Austrian Tourist Board says it is the go-to Sacre Torte. So we followed that recipe. It was originally made by Franz Sacker, who was an apprentice at the time for Prince Mitternich in 1834. So it's been around since quite a while. We were afraid that it was gonna stick because of our ganache, but it did not. 
Uh, obviously, we don't have the right uh, pie plate or cake plate for presentation, so we may have missed out a little bit on that. Probably the hardest part was just kind of separating the stuff and getting the, the apricot rum glaze on top and then the ganache over the top. Traditionally, they say the way to eat it is to get a little bit of the cake, a little bit of the whipped cream, and then eat them together. That's the, the traditional way to eat it. One of the funniest things about trying to find this recipe for the sacratort was um, most of the recipes I found online were in metric. And so it took me a while to find a couple of recipes that were actually in ounces and tablespoons and, and cups. So we could have done it, but uh, you know, most of my stuff's in Imperial, not, not metrics. I'm Debbie Venice. I've been baking since I was a kid. My brother, one of my brothers and I actually took a cake decorating class when we were kids. And about 20 plus years ago, myself and two of my friends did a Sweet Dreams Desserts Baking Company and we were one of the first groups that were uh, one of the first businesses that were at the cannery back when the the second street market was the cannery and so we were making desserts I've been yeah I've been baking for a long time I made a coffee chocolate cake with a chocolate ganache icing and raspberry topping this is a recipe I've been playing with for a couple of years and um, it it turned out pretty good I think I like it it's basically mostly chocolate, which is my favorite food group, so that works for me. <laughs> I started with a recipe that I found online, and then I've modified it. It originally talked about using water mixing with your coffee or your espresso. I chose to use red wine instead. I also add a little shot of rum to it to give it a little bit more of a, a zesty flavor. And I also put a little bit of rum in the chocolate ganache. One of our other ladies that's on the baking team or baking crew here at Liederkranz had mentioned that, that that's some way, a, a way to help enhance the flavors of your dessert. So I thought I would give it a try. I actually already shared the, uh, the recipe minus the adding the rum into <laughs> the Liederkranz cookbook. So the 2020 cookbook that we just had published, it's the recipes in there, minus again, the, the shot of rum. It's available actually right now. It's available for ordering with Foshing. Um, it'll be available for ordering with your pre-orders for our March comfort food carryout and any other event that we have where we're doing any kind of online ordering, you'll be able to order and purchase the cookbook at that time. I'm Miranda Mucci. I'm from Troy. <laughs> I mean, I grew up baking with my mom and my sister. Um, Oh. I have a small side baking business, but I work full time too, so I would not say that I'm an expert at anything like baking, but I just like to do it. I have fun, and oh, I'm not a fancy baker. Um, but I do like to do brownies and fudge cookies. I do not do cakes, because there are so many other people out there who do fantastic cakes. I've just never gotten into that, but I like trying new things. So every now and then, you know, oh, this recipe looks cool, and I've never tried anything like that before, so I'll just see if I can do it. And I always say when you combine, like, sugar and butter together you really you just you can't go wrong and, and so i did that a few times and so it should it should be at least tasting somewhat good well i was thinking decadent like to me decadent is like something that's very rich i thought chocolate because chocolate's like the epitome of rich and so i thought what things go with chocolate and so mm -hmm. that kind of led down a few rabbit holes and just combined some ideas i i'm no expert at that though <laughs> I am not a recipe creator, but I guess I would say I am sometimes a recipe combiner. You know, like you, oh, I like this out of this recipe, and I like this out of this recipe. What would happen if they went together? So maybe those things don't go together that I made, but I, it, was a te it, was a, it was a test. <laughs> There's no name for it. I, it is a, like a cake brownie with a caramel layer and a caramelized pear layer and whipped ganache on top. I, that's, yeah, call it what you want. <laughs> I was testing a bit over the past few days and the tests were, they, I feel like it tastes okay. Um, as far as whether all of the textures and things go together, I did not taste that version yet. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping that, it, I'm hoping, I mean, my husband and I aren't, aren't picky when it comes to desserts, so we'll finish whatever we take home. Uh, after I take it home and test it, then I guess I'll figure out whether it needs any more tinkering <laughs> or whether it's worth making that big of a mess in my kitchen again. <laughs> And the royal decree is that we shall now begin the official tasting. May the judges come up and join us, please. This first dessert is a chocolate coffee 
cake with a chocolate ganache. based on the flavor, texture, consistency, aroma, and overall taste. It is sinfully decadent. It is wonderful. It is um, it is soft. It is sweet, but not too sweet. It's sort of heavenly. I like it. <laughs> this is very hard to judge on this one. It's uh, appearance look really beautiful. I wish it's a little bit more uh, glossy on top, but the flavor is right on. This is uh, just a great balance between chocolate and coffee. It's not really dominant on one or the other, and the texture and overall experience in the mouth is excellent. Does somebody agree with me? <laughs> <laughs> Love the raspberry contrast with the, with the uh, chocolatey taste, and then to have that burst of raspberry. Fantastic. Delicious dessert. Well, I thought the dessert was uh, very attractive. It was quite flavorful. To me, I think the icing was uh, a little overwhelming in terms of being the chocolate taste. I tasted that more than the uh, content of the cake. But overall, uh, it's certainly scrumptious and delicious. One a very, very nice, beautiful, gorgeous, sexy looking cake. It's a little messy on the plate, but it's only because it's so full of uh, goodness. Um, it has a really, really nice uh, balance between the cream and the chocolate and mocha flavor. And I think the, the cake itself is a little too dense. It's kind of a nice contrast be between the cake and the cream, and also the chocolate co uh, chocolate covered coffee beans adds really nice contrast in the texture and it has a really nice good mocha coffee note to it and the cherry is not too sweet it blends into the cream perfectly so it's a very very nicely executed uh, uh, black forest mocha cherry cake very nice take me to the black forest this is delicious and uh, like the other said, it was a little denser than I was expecting, but it, it wasn't uh, super moist or anything. It, it was just a nice consistency. Um, I would like, personally, a little more uh, cherry flavor 
and um, definitely bonus points for the real whipped cream. Delicious. Well, I thought the cake was uh, certainly beautiful in appearance, and the taste uh, was superb. Uh, most all the flavors of the ingredients came through to me. Uh, I thought the uh, texture was, was very good, but it was a little bit difficult with some of the layers for the consistency to, to hold it all together. Overall, uh, I could even uh, sense an aroma with it, and I thought it was sehr gut. Entry is a, I think it's called a Zucker tort. Ooh. It is named for the chef that created it. Ah, okay. Who was 16 at the time. And your contestant should ask that you remember to eat a bite of whipped cream with a bite of cake, as that is the correct oh, methodology. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a few surprises in here, and I, I was curious what the ingredients were, so I asked. Um, so this is a soccer tort, and um, I wasn't exactly sure what a tort is, so we found out it is, a tort is something that has little to no flour in it. And for something with little to no flour in it, it really tastes great. Um, it, it is, it is um, I love the icing, I love the cake and its surprises, and the homemade whipped cream is to die for. So uh, this is a very simple looking cake. It's really uh, just hiding all the surprises inside. So it's just a nice chocolate cover, really simple, really clean. But when you cut into it, immediately the jelly just explodes out. And when you take a bite, you can taste that really complex uh, jelly and also the rum in it. It's just very, very nice for a flavor cake. And then they balance it with a very nice and clean whipped cream. So whipped cream is actually very, uh, it's a perfect balance to mix with this full flavor cake. And it's a really, really wonderful, really excellently executed cake. It's excellent. This is a traditional soccer tort appearance. It uh, doesn't have the fancy decoration that the other cakes do. But that's not to detract from how delicious it is. And I'm glad they used the traditional apricot uh, in the tort. Very, very good. Love it. Take me to Vienna. Well, as the others have said, when I uh, first looked at this, I thought it was quite unassuming. Uh, <clears throat> but once you bite into it, it really becomes powerful, flavorful every respect. Uh, it, it hit all the, uh, the buttons, so to speak. I thought it had a perfect balance. It was moist inside, uh, very uh, organized all together on the outside. So uh, one could, I thought of it as kind of unassuming, but I would have to sum it up by saying this, this tort is wow. entry is a caramel layered cake brownie with caramelized pear filling and whipped ganache. Oh, wait, wait. Okay. <laughs>
treat is a caramel layered cake brownie with caramelized pear filling and whipped ganache. This is a really special cake. I taste a lot of textures. I smell a lot of aromas. It's pretty special. It has a lot of presence. Yeah, and the flavor is lots of lots of presence as well. It's uh, overall very, very nice, very heavy cake. It's more like a more like a steak than a cake. Um, it has lots of texture, the chocolate and the caramel, it just blends in perfectly and the um, I feel like it's a little bit too dense and it's not in contrast in texture and then I keep on trying to pick up more of the pear for more of the pear. Pear is actually excellent excellently prepared. I feel like I can do more of the pear in it. The caramel is also very very well prepared. But it seems to be like the chocolate cake and the caramel tend to be overpowering the pear and just make it really dense cake. It's a it's a meal on a plate, it absolutely is. But overall, I feel that this is uh, a great presence, but too much a presence. How decadent can you get? <laughs> I never saw so many layers and so many different kinds of tastes. Uh, and when's the last time you had homemade caramel? Oh my, fantastic. I thought this uh, entry uh, was very interesting. It was quite inviting. Uh, I thought that it had several really good flavors in it. Uh, as other people have said, it's chock full of all sorts of different things. And they all come through uh, when, you, when you take a bite out of it. I thought that for its texture and its consistency, in spite of the fact that it has so many layers and so on, it really hit the nail on the head on almost every count. It held together. It, it, took a bite of it, it all sort of came together in your mouth. To me, this was a really tasty dessert. So now that the judges have tried all four of the desserts that were submitted for our Sinfully Decadent Dessert Contest, I will go ahead and collect up their judging forms, and we will be back in just a minute to let you know who the winners are. It's a very close squeaker, and we would like to thank all of our contestants. And all of our judges. It's such a difficult word. Oh, yeah. Math is hard, people. Math is hard. <laughs> <laughs> Your most royal highnesses, we have our numbers. And we will now pass them to you, so you may verify that we can actually do math. As we are but four humble servants. <laughs> can't figure out numbers. <laughs> the one and the one make two. <laughs> Okay, yes, it looks like it was a very close contest today because, again, they were all superb and um, it looks like everything is appropriate, it was fair, and everyone voted. So I'm going to pass it to our official announcer now. Thank you to our Prince and Par and to our judges for being here today to judge our Sinfully Decadent Dessert Contest for our washing for 2021. I'd also like to thank our participants in our Sinfully Decadent Dessert Contest. The top three places in the Sinfully Decadent Dessert Contest will win a German Cultural Prize Pack. First place, their prize pack will also include a custom Lederhosen bottle carrier. Second place will include custom embroidered face masks. The Lederhosen bottle carrier and face masks were made by one of our members here with Lederkranz Turner, and they're made by Sylvie Schrumpf. Thank you, Sylvie, for making those items to go into the prize packages for our first and second place winners. I'm going to start with announcing our third place winner. Our third place winner in our Sinfully Decadent Dessert Contest is Chrissy Glaze. Chrissy made the Black Forest Mocha Cherry Chocolate Cake. 
our second place winner in the Sinfully Decadent Dessert Contest is Josh Murphy. Josh made the soccer tort. And now for the moment everyone's been waiting for, our first place winner. Our first place winner in our Sinfully Decadent Dessert Contest is Marinda Mucci. Brenda made the chocolate brownie with glazed pear and caramel filling and ganache topping. Thank you, congratulations to all of our winners, and thank you again for everyone who participated and helped out in our Sinfully Decadent Dessert Contest. Thank you to our judges and to our friends in par for being here today and being a part of our virtual fashion event. Wow, those desserts looked amazing. And as being part of the contest, it I also got an opportunity to taste all of, all of the desserts and they are amazing. We'll be posting a link to the recipes. Um, it will also be in the, a link to the recipes will also be in the Dayton Liederkranz Turner's newsletter. As you can see on the screen, as we came back live, the you saw the I'm sorry you saw the the king cake with the baby sitting on top of the king cake as part of our Foshing fun packs we had king cakes that were made by some, one of the bakers here at the Dayton Leader Crons Turner and um, so thank I want to thank all of the everyone who purchased the Foshing fun packs today. I would also like to say congratulations again to our uh, Sinfully Decadent Dessert Baking Contest winners. Third place, Chrissy Galez. Second place, Josh Murphy. And first place, Mirinda Mucci. And Mirinda, this is the uh, custom item that you will be receiving with your, with your custom German prize pack. So congratulations to all of you. And thank you again for participating in our Foshing's Sinfully Decadent Dessert Bake Off Contest. I would also like to say thank you to those who helped put this together. I'd like to say thank you to Eileen, also to Bunny, Mike, Jeanette, Patricio, John Kerner, who was one of the judges, Judy Schneider, who was also one of the judges, and to our Prince and Par. Jarvi and Aaron. Thank you to all of you. Now I'm going to take a break, a brief break, and I'm going to end the stream and then we'll be back with our German Carnival Fashion music in about one minute. <laughs> 